Hello. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that has been searing on my heart. A topic that I've been pondering on for the past day. It's called a heart of worship. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I ask you, Father, to give all of us today, everyone that is listening, a heart of worship, oh God. A heart that may give you praise and show you gratitude, oh God, for your actions and for your mercies on a daily basis. For the fact that we are even alive today, I give you praise and mercy and glory and honour, oh God. For everyone that has logged on today, I'll give you praise, honour and glory, oh God. And I just say thank you, God. I say thank you. And for everyone here that's listening to this message, I thank you, God, for them, that, that you brought them here, that they may lives may be truly changed and impacted. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and hallelujah, amen. So what does it mean to have a heart of worship? Well, first, it has to be a state. A heart of worship is a state, a place in which you dwell. Now, what do I mean by this? The state in which I dwell? Think about it like this. Use an example as peace. Peace is a state of trans- tranquility in which you dwell. Where even in the midst of chaos, you are tranquil. You are like the eye of the storm. Or like the eye in the storm. So, it's the same thing with worship. When we have a heart of worship, we are in a state of praise and thanksgiving and glorifying and reverence God. That's what it means. Just like peace, just like it is to be in a state of peace or a state of joy or in a state of love. That means that your every action is consumed or most of your actions are consumed by that very thing or can be attributed or contributed to that very thing. So many of our actions as Christians have to contribute or be attributed to worship. It's very interesting because worship is something that a lot of us actually forget about. Like, yes, we may sing our one, two praise songs every Sunday or three praise and worship songs on a Sunday and maybe listen to like one God song that randomly fell into our playlist like once a week, but for the majority of us, all we do is maybe listen to one Christian song or one Bible CD or one chapter in the Bible CD and then dip, then walk away. But a heart of worship, this is why many of you do not receive your blessings. This is why many of you are not walking in the favour of God. It's because... You are not in the place of worship. God, the gift is right there. The blessing is right there. But because you're not in a state of thanksgiving, and he's not able, you're not able to receive it. Remember what the scripture says, it is better to give than it is to receive. So if you're in that state of constant giving, of constant thanksgiving, then God will constantly bless you because you are showing him thanks and reverence. You remember the story of the 10 lepers, how nine of the lepers left. Nine of the lepers, they were healed. Jesus told them what to do. They did what Jesus said and they were healed. And then they left, not even acknowledging the one who helped them. But there was one that came back and let us be that one not as in leprosy but as in worship in thanksgiving let us be that one that comes back to god and says thank you for what you've done let's not be that christian that asks and then move on let us be that one to count our blessings so that we may receive even more blessings in our lives to also be in a state of worship I want us to go to Hebrews 13, 15 as a, such a good example of being in a constant state of worship. It says here, 
In Hebrews 13, verse 15, it says, Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledges his name. So look, he gives you the stamps here, the stamps here, to be in worship, in a constant state of worship, to have a heart of worship. Let us, one, you have to be continual, which means you have to be consistent. Two, you have to offer up a sacrifice of praise. What does it mean by sacrifice? How does praising God, worshipping God a sacrifice? It means that cutting some of your time out for your other worldly or activities, you might have to cut some of them out. For example, maybe for an hour you go to with a coffee with your workmates. You're going to have to, but then God wants you to worship on that night. You might have to cut that out. And I'm not saying here to not have any friends, to be a recluse, to be a lonely person. But what I'm saying here is that we must sacrifice something. If it is our time, our money, our love, we must sacrifice something that the fruit of lips acknowledge his name. So that when we speak his name, that when our lips speak his name, he acknowledges that we acknowledged his name. We're acknowledging that he's there and he's in our midst. Worship is such a powerful thing. It gives you so many avenues. One, it worships God. Two, it shows that you're grateful. And therefore, three, you receive even more blessings. But worship is not a half-hearted thing. Worship is not just singing a few hymn songs and then calling it a day. Worship is committing yourself, sacrificing your pleasures, your sins, your desires. All of that to lay down on the cross for Jesus. Jesus said to pick up your cross and follow him. In Psalm 95, verse 6, it says, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. David is such a really good example of someone that has a heart of worship. He always worshipped. He even got naked one time while worshipping the Lord. That's how hard he was worshipping God, because he truly loved God. And in turn, God blessed him, favoured him, kept a hedge of protection around him. And God prospered his life. And God used David's talents and David's worship to soothe others, such as when King Saul couldn't stay properly without demons tormenting him. And it was only David's music that could calm him down. Therefore, I'm telling you all today, I'm telling you all today, especially to the Christians, this is a message to the Christians specifically. I want us all to stay in a constant state of worship. A state in which we may pick up our cross, sacrifice and follow him. And now we're going to do the altar call. Jesus died on the cross for you now. Paid the price for our sins by bridging the gap between humans and God. And now we can talk to God now. We can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for favour and mercy in our time of need now. Because Jesus is that bridge. But to get to God, we must go on the bridge. And that bridge is Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth and the light. No one comes through the Father except through me. Me. And because he rose on the third day, took the keys back from Satan and the devil, that now we can live for an eternity with him. So, if you want to receive this gift that he's given us, I'd like you to repeat this prayer to me. Say with me now, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Saviour. From this day forward. In Jesus mighty holy name. Amen and holy amen. You're the one lost sheep that's not been found. The one lost coin that's not been found. Your name is written to the Lamb's book of life. Amen.
in her league. So, what do I all want you to do from this Tuesday to next Tuesday? Well, what I want you to do is, I want you to change up the routine. Okay? So, instead, maybe you listen to two worldly musics or worldly music on the way to work. What I want you to do is replace that with a worship song. Just replace it with a worship song on your way to work or in the car when you are putting on the radio and then you put your what's the what's the what's the radio called now? It's Heart or something like that. Heart or BBC News or Sky Channel or Radio or whatever. Whatever station it is. And if it's a song especially, then I want us just to change it to a Christian radio. I know there's a few Christian radios out there. I've seen it. Change it to a Christian one and listen to some God worship. Or even put in the CD and listen to a Bible CD. Or if you have worship songs on CD, put the CD in the car and then there. Or even auto connect to your phone has Bluetooth. Then auto Bluetooth, auto connect, or I think it's called CarPlay on Apple, to the lap, to the car. And then play your God music. Play your Christian music from the phone. Listen to worship songs. And then worship while you're in the car. And praise God while you're in the car. Or even on the street with your earphones. If you have headphones, do it there. Wherever you go, replace the worldly things with things of God. Instead of watching binge watching TV for three, four hours, go and pray in your room for just two. Go and pray in your room for two hours. All I want us to do this week, Tuesday from next this Tuesday to next Tuesday, is to replace the worldly things with things of God. And that is what I want us to do from this Tuesday to next Tuesday. This has been a heart of worship. Thank you for listening and have a blessed week.